in March 2020 when the madness had just started. I had a conversation with Amir Rosick where I told him that what was coming was a financial control system. Basically, a digital gulag or a digital digital slavery and a digital plantation. And that it was going to manifest through the actions that happened because of the virus and the actions that were taken to mitigate it. The reason why I said this, and it wasn't something that a lot of people were saying, is because for years I had been tracking a shift that was occurring. And as a matter of fact, in 2016, I did a long video series called The Ascendant Project, specifically about this shift, why it's happening, and what we could expect moving forward. That's on YouTube. I'll put a link to it so that you can check it out. Later, later in the madness, last year, after moving my own family, at the beginning of the madness in April 2020, I moved my own family to Saipan, an island in the middle of the Pacific. And then as things went on where I was narrating what was happening, last year I started to use the hashtag build the arc. And I explained what that mean, what that means in videos that I made and also many interviews that I did during that time. The reason that I say all of this as we approach this next phase is because I want to preface what I'm saying with a little bit of information so that you could know where I'm coming from and who you're listening to, especially if you are just figuring out that things that you thought were going to be temporary or that you hoped would be temporary are not only not going to be temporary, but were just the beginning. Because indeed, they were just the beginning. What you can see now is that the game that is being played is one of financial upheaval, a paradigm shift in economies, in money, and in the financial system as you know it. We are in modern times, and throughout the last century, a move has been made that has been different from any other time in history, where human beings, most human beings, rely on money for their average, everyday survival. I want you to imagine, imagine that you and your family was cut off today, unexpectedly, from ever being able to use money. I don't just mean your money was taken away today and you might be able to earn some in the future. I mean the concept of money was made unavailable to you. Think right now. How long would you survive? How long would you survive? You can start to see, as I've said over the last six months or so, that where we were headed was to genocide. You're starting to see the beginnings of a system being put into place to deny money, the use of money itself, to those who go against the powers that be. And when I say the powers that be... For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes, there are individuals that are playing this out. But those individuals are playing out a pattern, and that pattern is eternal. That pattern is, is an intelligence beyond human. And it's something that humans have been tracking for thousands, tens of thousands of years. And that we have entire traditions to tell us when things have gotten out of balance. And things are out of balance now. There have been, there's been criticism of me for bringing my family to this place. And some people have said, oh, you, you were escaping. You were fleeing. Well, the truth of the matter is, the suffering that we are about to see, you cannot flee from it. No one 
will escape it. No one. You cannot choose whether or not you are going to suffer. The suffering will be universal. Even the people, even the people who are taking the actions to move this energy forward will suffer. This is important to understand. But they are willing to suffer because the God, the power that they worship, hates mankind. And they have a hatred for themselves and for mankind. Think of the Joker from Batman. Absolutely willing to suffer in order to malevolently inflict suffering onto others, even greater suffering. That is what is happening. You cannot choose to flee. You cannot choose not to suffer. What you can choose is you can choose how you will suffer. Since I've moved here over the last two years, I've done more work than I have ever done. Both in putting down the infrastructure for alternatives in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency space, teaching individuals, hundreds now, how to operate in that space, bootstrapping people up to be able to have the tools even to be able to program in this space, building prototypes and tools and utilizing them here on the ground to test them out, to get them ready to be used in other places. Writing a book, detailing a lot of this information, render unto Caesar. You can get that at theproofof.work. You have to decide how you're going to suffer. How? Not least of which in my how is, since I've been here, I've been accepted into the Orthodox Church, baptized and chrismated on this island by a priest when there are no priests on this island. And how does that happen? And this is part of choosing how you will suffer. The biggest temptation is going to be, and it has been, if you are honest with yourself, the biggest temptation over the last two years has been about comfort. The reason why all of us, and I'm not immune to this, the reason why we are where we are is because people wanted comfort. They went along. They got along to get along. I'll just wear this thing over my face. I'll just poke this thing into my arm and then things can go back to normal. They were never going to go back to normal. Never. That was just stepping you through the necessary process. You will be promised again this time that things will go back to normal. You will be promised comfort. As prices of things rise, as store shelves become empty, as people's money is seized from out of their bank accounts by the state, you will be promised a solution. And you will be promised that by some charismatic leaders, perhaps some new leaders. It's the same pattern. It's putting yet another bar in your cage. And eventually there will be so many bars that you, your children, and your children's children will be behind those bars with no way out. So you have to choose how you're going to suffer. Where is that going to take place? With whom are you going to suffer? And what are you going to do to prepare yourself now? to deny yourself some comfort, to prepare yourself. This is what build the ark means. How are you going to get your mind, body, spirit, family, environment prepared? Because the flood waters are rising. Noah built the ark. It's not that he didn't suffer. There was suffering to build the ark. No one believed him. There was emotional suffering. There was physical suffering. He had to do the work. When the floodwaters came, he still suffered. It's not like being trapped on that boat during a cataclysm is not suffering. It's not like the anxiety of not knowing if you will live through this, if this was all for not you building that. It's not like that's not suffering. Of course it's suffering. Noah suffered, but he was delivered. He chose how 
he was going to suffer. Those who didn't and let the flood water rise around them, the world happened to them. Noah happened to his world. This is what it means to build the ark. So we have to decide, will our suffering mean something? Will we see something on the other side, at least in our mind's eye? Will we know that we will suffer through this time? But will we have faith that on the other side, we will be delivered? And if we have faith, and if we move with faith, we will be delivered. That means doing some work. Right now because you haven't been. You've been waiting. That means doing some work. And it means doing some work even when others question what you're doing, even when others don't believe, because it's not going to be a party like what happened up in Ottawa. It's not about going out because they have bouncy castles and hay slides. It's not going to be bouncy castles and hay slides. It's going to be a lot of people telling you that what you're doing isn't going to matter. A lot of people telling you that what you're doing is foolish. A lot of people telling you that what you're doing is not going to lead to deliverance and that you should just go along to get along. Those are the same people who, when the doors to the boxcars opened, stepped in and said, I'm sure we're being taken to a better place where they're wanting to take you right now is a place that generations will not escape from. You have an opportunity. You have an opportunity to build a parallel financial system that it may take a few generations for it to have enough steam. You're going to be the initial people. The people who came on the Mayflower, who came and landed on Plymouth Rock, Most of them died, and some of us will. But their suffering meant something. That we've gone as long as we have without a global slavery system. The United States of America has played a part in that. Best believe. Now it's become corrupted. Now they've found the exploit. So what's left... What's left is to build the ark. What's left is to turn to tradition. That's what's left. And if we do that, we can choose how to suffer. And I'm not exempt from any of that. I will suffer. But I know I will, and I've chosen how. And if you're willing to work, I'm willing to suffer with you.